At the foot of the Rocky Mountains in Colorado is the United States' biggest airport. 70 million people went through its doors last year alone. It is home to the longest runway in North America at 16,000 feet. That is three miles long. And it covers 53 square miles, which is twice the size of Manhattan. Not Manhattan proper, Manhattan the entire island. But this airport is also said to house some of the country's biggest secrets. Subliminal messaging all the way from the hallways of the airport itself to a big overhead picture if you look at an aerial view. Fences meant to keep people in and not out. And an entire underground system of tunnels meant for the military, the global elite, or maybe something way worse. There's death, there's mystery, there's... Lots of creep shit. So today we're gonna get to the bottom, the literal bottom of Denver International Airport. Check out that intro song though. Fancy, right? Just to be able to intro my new Mikey Talks Way Too Much About Anything She Wants series, which we are affectionately calling Armchair Detective or Glam and Gossip, or I think Devil's Advocate would be a funny name, but I don't know. It's a new budding thing, and all you need to know is I'm gonna talk way too much about whatever I want. That's it, that's all it is. I don't know why I'm like calling it a series at all. I mean, I, I basically just talk about whatever I want as is, but it's gonna be more focused. There you go. I've gotten a focus in my life, and it's one topic at a time. Hello, zombies. This is not the normal song you hear because this is an intense series. Sometimes it won't be. Sometimes it's gonna be about like the sugar industry, but for today it's intense. So cue intense music. My name is Mikey, but spelled funny, M-Y-K-I-E. If you're new or lurking, please hit subscribe. I talk too much and I wear too much makeup. Man, that's what I was just about to comment. When I'm told I wear too much, I just want to wear more. <laughs> I don't actually get told that too much. I mean, I did a lot growing up, but now I'm just like, see, this is why I need to rein in the brain. Rain the brain. Rain the brain. We're talking about Denver International Airport. That'll be a scary sound. You should put a scary sound after every time that you say it. Every time I say it? Yes. Scary sound? All right, every time. Denver International Airport. You know, some topics I'm not gonna be able to get away with this tomfoolery because they're <laughs> gonna be very serious. But for today, I can get away with it. Not that there's no serious business going on at Denver International Airport. Because there is. This was actually a suggestion made to me from Zombies in my Instagram suggestion box. Someone said, what about the weird art at Denver International Airport? And this was amidst people being like, talk about Casey Anthony and Epstein and all of these really heavy, awful, dark subjects. And then Denver International Airport shows up and it's creepy art. And I was like, that sounds nice. I'm gonna write that down. Especially because I don't plan to make this series about like solo true crime things. I'm gonna leave that to Spencer. He's the freaking pro. If you don't know what I'm talking, about Spencer, my very lovely friend, please don't tell him I said that, has a wonderful podcast called Cult Leader, which you can find on iTunes, Spotify, and everywhere where you can listen to a podcast. And he does true crime stories, and I'm not about to step on his toes because he won't murder me. And then I'll be added to the podcast list. But it's not really the thing I want to do anyway. I'm still working on that video. You know what video I'm talking about. And that is going to be one of the exceptions. I'll do them every once in a while, I guess, if they like really, really mean a lot to me. And that one means way too much to me. But for the most part, I just want to talk about anything creepy or interesting thing that's on my mind. Sometimes it'll be like a bigger crime umbrella, like maybe trafficking schemes or like a pattern of people disappearing in national parks. Stuff like that is crime related, but most of my suggestion box were just all murders. So I had to throw out most of this, but here we go. Creepy art. Now this doesn't sound too interesting on the surface, right? Just like an airport. What do we care? It's 2020. Like there's way weirder things going on in 2020 than an airport. You'd be wrong. This is the weirdest airport there is or it ever could be. I put so much foundation on and I don't even know why I'm just aimlessly doing it at this point. I do, I wear too much makeup. I'm just gonna start. This place is spooky. And it was spooky from the onset. I believe it started to get built around 1989. But the thing is that Denver didn't need this second airport. I said second because it already had one, Stapleton, which happened to be a very close six miles to downtown Denver, very conveniently located. Instead, they decided that they wanted to build an entirely new airport that they didn't need 25 miles away from downtown Denver. Denver's in Colorado by the way, for my international zombies who might not know. You might not even know where Colorado is, shit. Show them a map on the screen behind you. Oh, true! I forgot, I can do a thing. <laughs> Colorado. <laughs> Fun, oh my God. That's 
really the reason. I just wanted to have a whole new series, new series, so I could just be like. <laughs> anyway, it might be a bitch to edit and render a video with a green screen behind me the entire time. This will be a fun experiment. Why do I have a third eye? Speaking of third eye, we get into some Illuminati shit, but we're not there yet. Oh, it was first proposed in the early 1980s. My bad. So they moved it like really, really far from downtown. Suspicious. Another thing that you should know about Denver International Airport, the airport went way, way, way past schedule by 16 months. And it went way over budget. Two billion dollars over budget. Two billion with a B. With a B? With a B. That is someone who does not know how to manage their money very well. One might wonder, what do you do with an extra two billion dollars? Where did that money go? Because obviously buildings have plans. You're proposing budgets and you already have estimates on what things are gonna cost. How do you misjudge by two billion unless it's being put somewhere else? Somewhere secret. I know, not super convincing yet, but just wait, there's way more, you'll see. They changed contractors several times, which some theorized was to make sure that no one really quite knew the scope of what was happening under Denver International Airport. In 1994, or five, it's a little debatable, the airport was complete. I'm pretty sure it was 95, but the reason I say 94 is because there is a dedication stone, which is kind of like a plaque, in the airport, and the day that it's dedicated to is March 13th of 1994. And we'll get back to that date in a second because it's very important. But on this dedication stone, it also has the Freemason symbol on it. Like straight up Freemason symbol. Visible right there. The Freemasons, if you don't know, and I really don't know a whole lot about them. It's basically a super old secret fraternity, but it's real. I actually, I didn't know that. I was talking to Peter about this video and he informed me that Freemason is not synonymous with Illuminati in the sense that it's like completely fabricated. But the Freemasons are associated with a lot of secretive shit. So they're kind of talked about in the same way as the Illuminati or like a new world order, etc. And I don't know if you noticed on that plaque, but it says that it was dedicated to new world airport commission, which is apparently not even a real thing. That doesn't exist in any other context except this airport. Why? Also, if you add up the date that is on this dedication stone, you get 33. 33 is the highest level of Freemasonry. And you're, I guess, like one with God then. I don't know if that's true. March 13th, 1994. It didn't open until 95, I think. So why March 13th, 94, unless two added up to 33? Wait, does it? Where's my phone? Three plus one plus three plus one plus nine plus nine plus four is 30. Wait, three plus one plus three plus one plus nine plus nine plus four. 30. Why do they say it adds up to 33? Three plus 13 plus one plus nine plus nine plus four equals 39. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Maybe it's 13 plus one plus nine plus nine plus four. 36. Minus the month of March. What? 33. Just like I said, conspiracy. There you go, Illuminati confirmed. If you have to try that hard to fit the math, then maybe it doesn't actually add up to anything creepy. It says March 19th. Have I been getting it wrong? Oh yeah, it's March 19th. <laughs> Okay, wait. March 19th. Three plus one plus nine plus one plus nine plus nine plus four equals 36. <laughs> minus the month of March, three, 33. Why are you minusing the month of March? Because I gotta make the number work for the conspiracy. <laughs> Duh. One plus nine plus 19, 94. Then you get 33. Okay, so if you just exclude the month of March, I didn't mean to debunk this early, but <laughs> we did. Oh my God. <laughs> Here's another interesting thing though. This dedication stone is also a time capsule and you cannot open the time capsule until 2094. What's but in there? Exactly. Does anyone know? No. Well, whoever buried it. Maybe they've cloned Ripley and she's in their time capsule. I would be into that. Your dog was I mean, she's, she is clearly hell bent for world domination and that is exactly what the new world order is also looking to do. So you do the math selectively so that it adds up to exactly what you're looking for. You know? Yep. Good. That's a very real, weird, creepy thing in the airport. Speaking of weird, creepy, real things you can find in the airport, there is a lot of really spooky art. There is a demonic horse that greets you when you are pulling up to the airport. His name is Mustang, but the locals call him Blucifer because he is a blue demonic horse statue. He's 32 feet tall and weighs 9,000 pounds. He's on ground that the public cannot even get to. He took 15 years to make. And he's possessed. Look at his eyes. Look at him. 
veiny as hell. He's veiny as hell. He's been working out at the gym. Definitely on steroids. That's the real conspiracy here. Look at this guy. This is just on the airport's website. Like, check out our horse. <laughs> like, it's not the creepiest thing in the world. Also, it said that Lucifer is cursed because the owner was killed when making him. And if true, that would be very spooky. Like, why the red glowing eyes? There's also some very interesting, we'll say, murals that catch the attention of a lot of travelers that are going through Denver. In particular, we have this gargoyle statue that is trying to escape out of a suitcase. He's really something. His name is Notre Denver. Get it? Like Notre Dame by Denver. And there's also these two murals in the airport. They're basically four separate paintings, but two go to one set and two go to another set. Murals by Leo Tanguma. Hope I'm saying that right. One is called In Peace and Harmony with Nature, and it looks like this. And one is called Children of the World Dream of Peace, and it looks like this. Some might say it's art. Some might say it's demonic communications. Basically, we're looking at two murals of a lot of death and destruction and violence. German soldiers, animals in glass cages, children in coffins. We got a letter from Auschwitz in here, which some might say is an odd choice for an airport. Some might say, imagine you're getting off a flight, you're super tired, kinda just wanna go to bed. It's been a, it's been a long day. And you get off your plane and you see that. What do you do. Catch the first flight back home. The first thing you'd see leaving is Lucifer. Now what? Also, you might not be able to escape because it's said that there's barbed wire around the perimeter of the airport that is angled to keep people in instead of out. Why? Because, and I'm glad you asked, I don't know what I'm doing on my eyes, but I hate it. I know that. I went in all willy-nilly and I shouldn't have. There is an underground system of tunnels under this massive airport that has been built specifically to protect the global elite, maybe the Illuminati. Oh. Illuminati. Celebrities, politicians, billionaires, the people who run the world, the top 1% of the top 1%. Cue Mr. Robot. These tunnels are real. There are several miles of tunnel, but I read that it has something like a million square feet of space in the tunnels. Like it's massive. A million square feet? Yeah. How many bathrooms? <laughs> That's a good question, I don't know. 3.5? Enough to house all the people who would care a lot about having a lot of bathrooms, I guess. Um, so that people can secretly go out under there to travel from one spot to another without being seen no, no, it's for the end of the world. Because if you haven't noticed the murals, the horse, everything points to the apocalypse and the end times. Lucifer signals one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. He's the pale horse, which stands for death. Fun fact. And obviously the murals are pointing to death and destruction and the end of the world. So the murals let everyone know who needs to know that this is where they can gather at the end of the world and be protected. People think that there's FEMA concentration camps, which that doesn't make sense. Those two things don't go together. Yeah. They think that there's a huge military base underground there in the event of a nuclear attack, especially because it's very close to a place called Cheyenne Mountain. Have you heard of that? No. Let me tell you about Cheyenne Mountain. It is a military base built a mile into a mountain right outside of Colorado Springs, Colorado. It's basically like a mini Pentagon. You'd have to blow up an entire mountain to get to it. So it has to do with folks. People think that the aliens are underneath of Denver International Airport. There's aliens down there too now? Everyone's down there. It's so big that we can <laughs> hold everybody. Like Come on in. Two celebrities, two billionaires, two Illuminati, which could overlap, two Freemasons, two YouTubers. You can take to repopulate the earth. Can you imagine? Two politicians. Please save Bernie. Two reptilians. <laughs> Please save Bernie. And two reptilians, that's right. There was a construction worker who worked on the site of the airport as it was being built, who later said that they built five multi-story buildings underneath the ground. Yes. And there was a very complex system of tunnels. It was rumored that an entire giant building was built underground and then they messed it up and they covered it back up with soil as like an oops. I guess that's where the money went. Makes sense. These are real things, yeah. apparently. I watched a video of someone who went down into the tunnels and he came out on level three and he said that he never hit a level two or one, you know, like a negative one, negative two. They just ended up on three. Conspiracy. I think there's lizard people in the time capsule, just as a side note. Cryogenic frozen or something? No, they're alive and immortal. You think there's a being that's just sleeping in the time capsule right now? What if the time capsule has snacks? Well, they would have outdated packaging and they would probably be stale. Might be worth a million dollars. What if they have beanie babies down there? <gasps> they have 
Beanie Babies in the time capsule. They pulled the secrets to the earth in the most rare Beanie Babies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, this is a fun thing we can talk about. Not only is it creepy from the inside of the airport, but if you were to get an aerial view of it, which you might coming in from a, I don't know, like a plane, you would see that the airport runways are kind of shaped like a... Yeah, you know what that is. You should look it up. Type in Denver International Airport Aerial View. This is a Rorschach test. Tell me what you see. Yeah, you know, that's what people say they see. Now, why would that be unless it was a new world order kind of situation? Of all the patterns in the world, why that? People also report strange paranormal activity. I think because of the Lucifer curse, because it's reported to have killed its maker, which is very poetic if you think that he represents the four horsemen of the apocalypse and the pale. Also, you know, there's a morgue on site, so there are literally dead bodies being stored there for some reason, and that might be why it's haunted. So people that have worked there report lights flickering on and off and doors closing in weird ways and kind of like the, the typical paranormal kind of stuff, if, if there is such a thing. But there are some very, very real measurable weird things that happen at this airport too. Like in 2007, the windshields of 14 planes cracked simultaneously. 14 windshields cracking at the same time? It's like a change in the pressure. I don't know. Could be. Might not be. The theory is that a sonic weapon had just been tested underneath of the airport, or that electromagnetic pulses deep underground caused the cracking of the windshields. Just in general, it's apparently a very eerie place. People that are even skeptical of all of these things say that it just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. It's just kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's surrounded by so much empty land. There isn't hotels or dining like you would expect that you see around most airports because you know that there's going to be travelers that want places to lodge close by. And it just seems like no matter what, there's just a creepy experience. Oh, and this massive airport, already massive, they're currently expanding. They're adding almost 40 gates to it right now. What? Why? Run out of room? <laughs> so clearly, something's going on. And I think what it is, is a lot of conspiracy brain. I shudder to think that some people have already left thinking that I believe any of this has like a creepy origin about it. Just because I'm going to be talking about some things that have a conspiracy type nature every once in a while does not mean that you get to leave thinking that a conspiracy is actually happening because I'm about to ruin all the fun for you guys too. You know, sometimes conspiracies might be true. Sometimes the strangest possible occurrence is what's really happening. However, sometimes the simplest explanation is the explanation. Let's start from the top, shall we? So like, why would they build a second airport to begin with when they didn't even need one? The previous airport, Stapleton, had been built in 1929. And the thing is, it was just old and it was too small to house modern day jets because of course, planes are getting bigger and bigger. You need longer and wider runways. A lot of people complained about the noise because it was so close to downtown. So while it was convenient, it really wasn't great for all of the people that would wanna live in the most populated dense area of the city. And because the runways were diagonal, they couldn't all be used at once. So it really slowed down traffic, it slows down tourism, it makes everything more congested than it needs to be. So they decided that they wanted to move the airport to a new place that was not only designed better for travelers, but that was so large that it even had room to expand, which like I said, they're doing. So jumping around a bit here, that can bring us back to our very interestingly designed runway shape at DIA. While yes, upon first glance, it does look like a if you actually outline the runways, it doesn't look that much like one. See? This runway design is apparently very helpful for Denver specifically because it has really strong winds being like around mountains and valleys and having this design makes it easier for them to take off with wind in mind. They claim they think it looks like a pinwheel. It's fair, I guess. <laughs> They probably weren't thinking too much about how many people were gonna, well, no, they, I guess they should have been thinking about what it would look like overhead because you take off from it yeah. and you land on it. I don't know. It's got a practical design. Some people have criticized that though and said that there are a lot of other major airports that allow for several takeoffs at once that don't look like that though. True. That's fair criticism. Back to the inception of the airport though, way over budget and way over timeline. That points to the fact that they built something else around it that cost a lot more money and took a lot more time than they were planning, right? All I'm gonna say about this one is all you conspiracy theorists have never watched a full season of Grand Designs and it shows. Anyone who has ever watched any of those kinds of shows knows building plans never end up on time or within budget. Never. Never. Always times everything by three. You're lucky if you don't get a divorce in the process. 
If you're lucky, if your kids haven't completely grown up, gone off to college and lived their own lives, even though you were building their little magical dream bedroom as a five-year-old. Remember that guy? Yes. I don't want to spoil it for you, but there's some pain in grand designs. So I feel like this criticism in particular is extra weak. <laughs> That's just how building projects go. It is easier to convince someone to give you a little bit more budget than to get approved for a high budget initial. That is true, and that's actually how the airport came to be, is the mayor at the time, I think he approved something like 60 million on the onset just to start it, and then he ended up not being mayor after that, and then someone else had to take it over, and you know, they keep like adding to the cost. And they have to say yes to the extra cost, or else everything was worth nothing in the first place. Yeah, so that's, that's a rage. Also, it was delayed supposedly because United Airlines kept changing their requirements, so they had to change the design and the plans for the airport several times. Changing contractors also doesn't seem that weird to me because if something's not getting done the way that you want it to, you'd probably switch. But what about the barbed wire that's meant to keep you in? Isn't that indicative that there's something much more sinister going on? If it's angled in, clearly some shit's going down. Well, uh, apparently that's just a big fat lie. The barbed wire is just straight up. I don't understand how some conspiracies come to be when it's like so easy to disprove it. I guess they're just banking on the fact that people are just gonna believe it and move on and not fact check it at all. What about the weird art though? Isn't that pointing to some kind of subliminal messaging, some kind of advertisement for the world's elite? This one is like the silliest to me. One of the conspiracy theories is that it had to be approved by the mayor in order for it to go up. And I just think that they wanted people to have conversations. It's certainly something that grabs people's attentions, that is gonna stimulate their minds, that they're gonna talk to people about, maybe even strangers about. I think that's a cool thing. This was the first time that Denver had a Hispanic mayor when they were building the airport. And I had read that they were doing everything that they could to have a lot of minority communities come together to build this airport and to be representative of the diversity of Denver. So all of the artists are local and I'm pretty sure they're all minority as well. He's a Chicano artist, Leo Tenguma, and this is just the kind of art that he does. In Peace and Harmony with Nature is like a warning about what's going to happen if we don't take care of the environment and we don't come together. And likewise, Children of the World Dream of Peace is about coming together in unity to achieve peace. Are they dark? Yeah, but the realities are dark and a lot of artists express themselves that way. I think it's kind of silly to say that that's not appropriate for a very public setting. I think that it's really cool that Denver took the chance to make it a very public conversation because they're important things. So art is what you make of it. I personally like it just as is, but I'm a creepy person who does dark art herself. Also, the airport has a thriving art and culture program. If you actually go on the airport's website, they showcase all of their art. They tell you a little bit about each piece that you can see. So it actually has a ton of art inside of it. Some of it is very like innocent and cute, like a road trip piece here. Some of it's very elegant like this. Some people theorize that because one of the murals got taken down that it's a conspiracy because they know that it's bad and people were catching on. That area is just under construction. A lot of the innocent ones, like the road trip one, is also currently in storage. It's not really a thing. And same goes for Blucifer. He's just a horse being a horse. He's completely innocent. His red glowing eyes are just because the artist who made him, his dad owned a neon shop and that's a tribute to that. The horse did kill the sculptor though, that part is true. The head fell and severed an artery in his leg and he died. But his children and community members finished the horse so that it could be displayed at Denver's airport. So it's kind of a legacy piece at that point and it's very sad. That's actually like the darkest realest thing about the airport, I think. And maybe it is cursed, that could be real. I will say the underground tunnels are real too. There is an actual crap ton of tunnels. When I was reading about this, a lot of people were like, they don't even know what they're for. They just kind of sit there and don't do anything. That's not true. They are literally used to transport baggage <laughs> from planes to the baggage claim. Is it a good system? Does it work well? That's funny that you asked that. You asked that as though you knew the answer to this question, but I know that you don't. One of the reasons it's suspected that it went way over budget is because initially they wanted to build this state-of-the-art automatic baggage system that transported baggage from the plane to the baggage claim without needing workers to do it. It seems like the tests didn't actually go that well as is. 
I think they brought reporters in when this was happening and it, it was like a nightmare and they had to cancel the whole program. So they lost a lot of money on that. And that system still exists. Like it's in the tunnels right now, just like collecting dust. It doesn't do anything, but that's part of why they wanted so much underground space as well. There's also a train system down there, a little tram to take you to different concourses. Oh, I forgot to mention real quick, there's an AUAG and people think that it stands for Australian Antigen, which is a chemical abbreviation for a bioweapon, but it just means gold and silver. Like that that's oh, how yeah. silly this stuff gets. That's obvious. Yeah, it's also obvious that there aren't lizard people living in a time capsule underground, but what is it? Probably cute shit from the 90s. Honestly, it's probably a Tamagotchi, a Beanie Baby, <laughs> and a Pog. Pokemon on the original Game Boy. Game Boy Color. Game Boy Color. Yes, that's all it probably is. And some Nickelodeon slime. Gak, yeah. Oh, and the gargoyle, he's legit. He's cool, leave him alone. Gargoyles protect, that's what they're supposed to mean. And the idea behind the statue was that it protects your luggage from getting lost. <laughs> so that's actually really cute. I appreciate that. Me too. Back to these tunnels though. If there was a conspiracy, they're gonna deny it anyway, but all the staff say that the tunnels aren't for anything other than transporting baggage. There's no underground bunkers. There's no military postings. There's no FEMA camps there. Again, someone mentioned that it's next to all of these other places like the Cheyenne Mountain complex. Yeah. It's near two Air Force bases, all this military stuff. What they mean to say when they say near is it's two hours away. So it's not super close. Also, if you have the mini Pentagon two hours away, why do you need one under an airport? I don't know. I don't think that that's the craziest thing in the world. Obviously the Illuminati's not hanging out down there because the Illuminati's not real. Or is it? Or am I part of it and that's why I want you to think this is all Fake. I would never ever be a part of something that totally doesn't exist. Sorry, just making sure that my eye makeup is framed up nicely. Hold on, I'm just gonna make sure the framing's right on you. Yeah? A little closer? Yeah. Closer? That looks perfect. Does that framing look great? Yeah. But anyway, the Illuminati's not real. I don't think the New World Order is either, but maybe we'll save that for another video. Honestly, probably not, because what a waste of time. Am I right? Oh, Jesus Christ. What? There's lots of poop everywhere. Really? Lots of poop. Really? Not a conspiracy? Not a conspiracy. I wish it were. They rang the bell literally two seconds ago. I think he only touched it. While pooping? Oh! Pooping. Oh my god, honey! You know that was bad. We're back. Thank you for that creature. Where were we? He holds me hostage. We're contractually obligated to talk about his poop once a video. He seemed traumatized back then. I am. <laughs> Oh, all the windshields mysteriously cracking at the same time. That's right. 14 different airplanes simultaneously. How do you explain that? I found a source that said that it was investigated and it was the result of grit particles hitting the windshield in like a little windstorm. Which honestly, Anthony and I have experienced before. We were driving back from Sacramento together. We drove through just like a patch of hail and it up all of Anthony's car. Yeah. Literally every single inch of his car. <laughs> Nature can do that, apparently. Nature be crazy. I mean, plain windshields are presumably a lot more rugged than like a car window. So that does seem excessive, but I guess it was really wild. I'm sure the weather gets crazy in Colorado with the landscape and the Rocky Mountains right there, but it is weird. I also thought it was interesting that the source that I found about this said that it's not like this was a one-time occurrence because in 2011, there were three more windshields that were cracked. And in the article that they sourced, it said that the cause was unknown. If one of the theories is that they were testing sonic weapons, we know that sonic weapons can do a whole lot of damage based on the very first episode of this little series that was about LRADs. So, is it possible? Yeah. Is it likely? No, I don't think it's likely. But it's one of the more weird things that are actually happening at DIA. Here's the thing. I bet there's a lot of shady shit going on military-wise that one, arguably, we would just need as like a defense. Like, we shouldn't know everything the military is doing. Because if we knew everything the military was doing, then our potential enemies would know everything that our military is doing, and that would compromise national security. But that's scary, because then the military can do anything they want. The problem is when they can take advantage of that, yeah. yeah. If something can be taken advantage of, then someone will take advantage of it. But you can say the same thing about social media. Like, there's a lot of things that have give and take where people want social media and they want new technology, like filters that can go on your face and that are super realistic, but that just means that the tech gets better to be able to scan your face and store it in databases, and that can be taken advantage of. You have to hope that the things that are there to keep you safe are acting as they're supposed to. And the things that are there to make your face a lot cuter are there to just make your face look a lot cuter. Once you open Pandora,
Pandora's box, there's kind of no going back. I actually think that we've passed that threshold quite a bit with a lot of technological things that honestly governments just haven't kept up with because they're so far behind tech advancements and the law changes so slowly. I think we've passed the mark for a lot of things and we're gonna see the consequences of that in the next few decades. Yeah, climate change alone. <sighs> yeah. The sad thing about that is that tech can literally save us. And it's not like there isn't money in clean tech for energy. It's just that there's already so much money in dirty energy that you're not gonna take them out unless they're kicking and screaming. Mm -hmm. I could probably do a whole episode on a, like how much money stops necessary development. This really got sidetracked. <laughs> yeah, and here's the thing I actually really like about DIA. They've leaned all of their marketing into the fact that there are a lot of conspiracy theories about the place. Alien posters with Illuminati symbols. I don't know if they do it every year, but at least for one October, they dedicated the entire month to the conspiracies. They even had a conspiracy costume contest. I think that's pretty funny. I appreciate that they have such a sense of humor about it. But it begs the question, is DIA leaning into the conspiracy theories just smart marketing and a good sense of humor? Or is that the perfect cover for something more sinister? So that when things get really weird there, they can just laugh it off and say, Yep, totally, totally. The Illuminati. It's exactly what they want us to think. But this is the nature of conspiracy theories. They are self-confirming. They exist in a way usually where it is impossible to disprove them because to disprove them is almost further proof that they exist and they're trying to remain a secret. Oh, and by the way, Yes, Denver International Airport does have a morgue. However, a lot of major airports have morgues. This is not something I knew before I started my research about this place. But today I learned, not only do most major airports have morgues, but the reason is because a lot of commercial airlines are transporting dead bodies, remains, etc., to go to their final resting place for lab testing, whatever it may be. Apparently it's quite common. So there might be a dead body next to your checked bag the next time you fly. Have fun knowing that now if you didn't know it before. I could probably do a whole video on places dead bodies exist that you don't know about. They're probably everywhere. People die all the time. We all gotta go sometime. So in conclusion, I feel like Denver International Airport is just kind of a massive place that had the bright idea to put stimulating art in its terminals. I don't think it means anything except that they wanted people to think and be entertained and start conversations with each other. I think that the tunnel system is a failed attempt at making the baggage system more efficient, which is probably just impossible. And all that missing money probably hurts them a lot more than it hurts the conspiracy theorists. Please let me know down below what other things you'd like to hear me ramble about for way too long. I can and will talk about anything, literally anything that you think is interesting, I'm open to talking about. The dark web. I'm not gonna f with the dark web. You know what, a lot's off topic. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> this is the look. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something new. Today was a very tinfoil hat topic, but they're not gonna all be this way. Some are gonna be darker than others. Some will be a lot lighter than this. You're gonna have to come back soon to find out what the next one is. Bye.